I was gonna wait until later to do this, but y'all, okay, so I just got through watching the Wiz, all right? Y'all know I had to pop up on this camera and tell y'all how I felt about it, okay? If you have not watched it yet, you put it on your DVR and all that stuff, you gonna enjoy it, so if you don't wanna hear nothing about it, just know that you are gonna enjoy it and to cut this shit off, because I don't want nobody saying, oh, you spoiled it, but if you seen the play, you know, the Broadway play from years ago, if you seen the movie, you damn near seen this play. This, the Wiz Live, was basically an updated version, you know, of the actual Broadway play with a mixture of, you know, the um actual movie, The Wiz, that had Michael Jackson. You know, the Broadway play was Stephanie Mills. Stephanie Mills, she played in this move in this um version too, but instead of her playing Dorothy, she played uh, Auntie M. Okay, and you know, she did a good job. Huh? Dorothy sang at the beginning, and instead of you know, if you're going by this is where it goes to show, listen, people was in such an uproar. I was so mad when I see that shit. Like, people was talking about how, oh, my God, why is it an all-black cast? And if it was an all-white cast or something else, it would have been racist and all this stuff. Child, The Wiz is an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. That is where it comes from, okay? That is a black version of The Wizard of Oz. And if you want a white, another white version of The Wizard of Oz, Baby, you got Wicked, okay? And they were showing the commercial. And Wicked, I want to go see Wicked so bad. I do. Uh, um, You know, they got Wicked. So there you go. Quit, quit tripping, all right? But The Wiz, it started off, it was good. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm a big, huge fan of The Wiz, the movie, okay? The actual movie with Michael Jackson. Diana Ross was like 35-something years old or whatever the fuck, playing Dorothy, a little-ass kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In The Wiz. And then yeah, Nipsey Russell and all them up in there playing the Tin Man, playing the uh, 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 what was the Cowardly Lion and all them, you know. And it was good. It was great. And when they got to Emerald City, you know, the soundtrack was there by Quincy Jones. And if you ever seen the movie The Wiz, you look at um when they was in Emerald City and they was doing the lights. Uh, the color of the day, child, is gold. And then when it turned gold, he was on the on the piano and stuff like that. Bitch, I can give y'all. The rundown and sit. They were shooting at a Walmart. God damn. I can sit here and give y'all word by word of that two hour plus movie, The Wiz. Okay, that is my motherfucking show. But, so I was a little bit worried as to how they was going to do this. But then I seen the making and the behind the scenes of it. And how, you know, they was it was it was coming along. And I was like, okay, I think I might like this. I was a little weary about the um, Dorothy girl. Because like I said in another video, I didn't really too much care for her voice. But I liked her personality. And her personality made her voice just a little bit more easier on my ears. And more likable to me, you know. Um, Stephanie Mills and her, when they sang their song at the beginning, they did a real got a good, real good job. Stephanie Mills still got the pipes, girl. She still got the pipes. What award, awards was that when she came to the BT Awards? Was it the BT Awards like a couple of years ago when she sang home? When I think of home, I think of a place where there's... Come on, come on. Listen, I, I can go, I can go. I'm excited because I liked it. I liked it. I liked the show. Very, very much. And, you know, they had Uzo from um, Orange is the New Black playing um, Glenda the Good Witch. You had uh, Amber Riley playing the other witch. Girl, I can't um, remember her name, but in the movie, in the movie, she was uh, Miss One. You know what I'm saying? The Munchkin Land. The Witch of the Munchkin Land. The Indivisible Land of Oz. You know? And they had... Um, Mary J. Blige playing Eva Lane, of course, and um, Elijah Kelly playing the Scarecrow, um, Neo playing the Tin Man, David Allen Greer playing the, um, the Cowardly Lion, Shanice Williams, I think that's her name, she's the new girl, she played Dorothy, and everybody played their part, and Queen Latifah played the Wiz, okay, and the show was like two, two hours and almost three hours, two hours and 45 minutes, okay, and with commercial breaks, you know, they got to get their sponsors and pay their bills and all that stuff. But I suggest everybody just sit down and watch it because it was, you will like it. If you seen the play, the Broadway play, if you seen the, um, the actual movie, they have all the original songs in there. You know, they do add an extra song, a new song 
um, I think it's called You Got It or whatever, but you'll be singing along and you'll be dancing to it and they jazzed it up. They like put it into a 2015 semi, you know, like almost hip hop. Look, they was dabbing and hitting the quine and the crows was nay naying all up in this bitch. I said, what the hell? Okay, get us interested. Get the young kids back into it. But they would have liked it anyway because it's music. You know, it's music, it's dancing, it's theatric, it's circus soleil, it's everything, you know. And um, everybody's vocals was on point. Everybody was vocals was on point. Um, I'm, I'm doing a little comparing and contrast to the movie, to this. Um, you know, in the movie, if you've seen the movie with Michael Jackson, basically... They had it said like she was in New York, but in here on the um the live version, they actually had it set where it really was in the Oz and Kansas and all that stuff. And it was a tornado. They came and took the house up and all this stuff. And you know she falls into Munchkin Land and Amber Riley comes out there. First of all, the Munchkins played her, had her sitting like she was finna get you know caught up for a murder. You know, and then Amber Riley, they was like, "Girl, you did the damn thing." Amber Riley come out there and was like, oh my God, you killed my sister. You killed my sister. And start laughing. I said, all right, bitch. And when they start singing, he's the whiz and he lives. And I, girl, Amber, 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 Amber fucking Riley. Okay, you better hold that note in that song. You did that shit. I have to say that. Um... As the show progressed, and it got to, you know, different stages, of course I was looking, and, and you know, once again, like I said, if you've seen certain parts, um, if you've seen a movie, if you've seen a play, you're going to be comparing, you're going to be contrasting, that's what I was doing the whole thing, but, you know, I just thoroughly enjoyed it, and I love the fact that, you know, they didn't try to stick so closely to the movie or to whatever, they had some of the elements and they made it their own and you know no one was trying to mimic you know another person when elijah kelly came on the scene as the scarecrow you know i had a little bit of concern them scarecrows is out there dad uh nay nay and shit i said all right look at this with that fresh line up okay you know and he on the thing and the only thing that irked me about him was like i said i shouldn't compare but he should i just wanted him to be you know, jigging on that pole while he was singing, you can't win. You know, that was one of my favorite songs out the whole show that Michael sang, you know, out the movie. And, you know, he was just kind of still up there. But then all of a sudden he got down. You talk about something, you ain't never been off this motherfucking pole. You in the, in the um middle of singing a song and you get down. And then you literally flipping and dancing and hitting the two steps. And then you get your ass back on the pole. I said, wait a minute, for a bitch that ain't never walked before, you sure enough jigging the fuck out your feet like that, you know? And then when he comes down, he couldn't walk a little bit, but then they got it. Girl, at the beginning, before they even met the Scarecrow, when I heard the chorus to ease on down the road, first come on, and then it, it kind of played us because then it went to commercial break. I got too geeked. I was like, oh, shit, because I'm ready to sing. I was singing throughout the whole thing. I was just, uh it was like my childhood relived all over again. I just had, I just, I just, I loved the, I loved it. You know, I'm not even going to delete it from my DVR. I'm finna go buy the soundtrack just because, you know, it was that good to me. You know, everybody did a good, a, a good part. Neo, he comes on the scene and, um, hmm, everybody was serving vocals. Okay, Neo, <sighs> His vocals was okay. It was very much Neo. Like, when I heard Elijah Kelly singing as the Scarecrow, I wasn't thinking of him. And I knew who he was. And I know he do. You know, Elijah Kelly can sing his ass off. You know, he was in the um, Hairspray movie, too. I'm pretty sure he probably did some Broadway stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he can sing his ass off. And I can see him as the character. When David Allen Greer came up and he was playing a Cowardly Lion, girl, they had that damn pack, okay? And... He started singing. I didn't see David Allegrin when I heard him singing. I seen the Cowardly Lion. I seen the character that he was supposed to be playing, okay? But when Neo started singing, I just started hearing Neo. And then he had a southern-ass, twang-ass accent in the land of Oz. And I was like, mm, okay. You know, he up there dabbing and shit. I was like, all right, you know, you do what you got to do. That was my only coin. I wish they could have found another 10-man, but, you know... 
you got to work with what you got. It was cool for what it was. Wasn't that great, the 10 men. Um, but he did okay. I will say he did do it okay. Um, what else did I want to touch on? Because the show was long as hell. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Y'all saw it. Um, Mary J. Blige came out. And finally, when we did the Girl, the Poison Poppies. The Poison Poppies was everything. I said, you better give Naughty Girl teens. I mean, you're Naughty Girl. Mm -hmm. I said, come on, y'all. They popping on the floor and shit. You know, in the movie, the Poison Poppies was damn near hookers, okay? You know, they was like, come on. I was like, all right. <laughs> Okay, and of course, the Cowardly Lion bested them, and it just threw me off some certain parts, like when, um, the music, when they were singing it, because once again, in my mind, every time I'm looking at the, the live show, I'm thinking of the whiz, and I'm thinking of the songs, and I'm thinking of the placement where the songs came at, you know, in the movie of the whiz, um, I'm a lion, when they sing that song, they sing that song after they got fucked, uh, trapped up by the poppies, the poison poppies. They sang in the, um, the the live version that just came on tonight. They sang that early on when they was, um, you know, Dorothy had a little vision or whatever of uh, her mama being there. And the, the lady that was supposed to be her mama trying to take her shoes and then they got attacked in the uh, forest or whatever. That's when they sang the uh, I'm a Lion then early on. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is cute. Mm. All right, you know, I ain't going to judge it. You know, you do what you got to do. And another one was, you know, when they... Got the Tin Man story, and, you know, he was talking about how Evelyn, uh, the, the the Wicked Witch that died, you know, had a little thing for her, thing for him, and, you know, basically said, if nobody can have you, I'm going to turn you into a Tin Man, and I'm going to take your heart and all that stuff. He started singing this song, um, Slide Some Oil to Me. That's the first song he started singing. In the movie, though, once again, I shouldn't do this, but in the movie, though, when they first met him, and they got him, and they was like, you know, um, give him some help. They picked him up and all that stuff. His first song that he started singing was, you know, If I Can Smile, you know, the um, about him if he had a heart. And that song came later on in the, um, the play when they was at the Wizard, at that first time seeing the Wizard. But in the movie... They sang that song first, and then he started crying, and then he rested himself, which made him start singing the song, Give Me Some Oil, you know, slide some oil to me, you know, that song. And I was like, okay, this is a little bit out of order. Maybe this had to go on the Broadway play. I got to find a Broadway play. And um, I was like, but it kind of flowed. It flowed. I like the fact that it still flowed together, even though to me it was a little bit out of sequence, but it kind of flowed still. And it didn't throw me off too much, you know, and... um. Queen Latifah did a good job as the Wiz. First of all, <laughs> people thought it was shade that they were saying, sir, and sir, and sir. Bitch, first of all, fuck that. I'm sorry to cussing this because this is like a family show or whatever. But, but, when they got to Emerald City, that's what I want. Emerald City, Emerald City down what? In Boys Town? Okay, what is the gay strip in your city? That is what Emerald City was. They got up in there. First of all, Common. Common was the bouncer. If you ain't on the list, get behind the line. You're going to have to wait. Your name got to be on the list in order to get up in here. Either you got to know somebody, grease my palm, or being a, a celebrity and all this stuff. I said, Common, let them in. You know, so when they finally get in, um, all I wanted to say, you got to be green. You got to be green. If y'all seen the Wiz, you know the song I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> when they got finally got into the Emerald City, and they kept on changing the lights and the colors and all that stuff. But um, they get up in there, and it was green as hell. And everybody was up in there, and I was not expecting this. This is the one part that I really was not expecting. Like, it literally was like a fucking nightclub up in there. And they voguing. I mean, really voguing. I said, y'all better serve for the kids. Serve for the kids. Come, 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 pussy, 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 ow, I was like, you better do it, bitch, drop, I'm waiting for that beat to drop, and I was waiting for one of them to do a death drop, and it never really happened, I was kind of disappointed in that, I said, don't give me all of this Vogue and shit, and nobody do a death drop, come on, you gave me five elements minus the death drop, what is going on, but y'all better fucking work, okay, they was just giving it, I said, I am so much here for this, and then we get the whiz, 
Queen Latifah, you know, first of all, you should have known that it was a woman because that robot that they had, it had too much attitude and it had the neck going. I said, girl, calm your tits, bitch. Okay, calm them, you know, and they people were trying to say that it was a little bit shady, that they was calling her sir and all this stuff. But you had to remember that they thought that the Wiz was a man, you know, when she came out there. And I mean, it is Queen Latifah, so... Uh, so I guess I can see where the shade is, you know, but they didn't know that the Wiz was actually a woman that didn't get revealed until at the end when, you know, the Wiz was just being shady to him. Like, girl, I don't care about your problem. You want a brain? What you going to do with a brain? You want a heart? Why you want a heart? You want heartbreak? You want heartache? You want indigestion? You want all of that? Child, please, you a coward ass lying. You don't, girl, ain't nobody thinking about you. I said, come on, queen with the hair. Yes, in the all um, makeup. Then they was like, you know, the whole thing was to go kill Eveline. And we was all waiting for Mary J to come out. We thinking Mary J going to Mary J bop on there. You know Mary J can't dance worth a damn. But she came out there and Mary J acted her ass off. She looked good. Um, She sang good. You know, don't nobody bring me. No bad news, no bad news, no bad news, no bad news, no bad news. Come on now. And <laughs> she had to, when she had to go uh, put out her flying monkeys, the one thing that I did catch, instead of saying flying monkeys, because they said it in the Broadway play, they said it in the movie, and it's an all black cast. And I kept seeing these tweets like, oh, they didn't say monkeys because it's an all black, but in the all black, the in the whiz, both productions, they said flying monkeys. So I don't get why they changed it to uh, Flying Warriors or whatever, but okay, maybe because of the social climate of what it is today, but I don't know. Um, I wouldn't have been offended. But um, that was cute. That was cute. That was real cute. When she was like, what's that on the floor? A drop of water. What can a water do? Do walk past and she tripped him. He was like, there you go. Because you know she allergic to water and all that stuff. Go back, I'm telling y'all, go back and look at the Wiz and go to that scene when you see Evelyn in the sweatshop. Bitch, her fucking throne is a big-ass toilet, okay? And when Dorothy pulls the fire alarm and then the water comes down and she was like, no, I'm allergic to water, bitch. She gets flushed down her own throne. <laughs> This shit was so fucking funny. I'm like, if you was allergic to water and you don't like water on your skin and stuff, bitch, you probably stink. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it was cute. And when they finally, that's what, how they got her with the water and they killed her and all that stuff. And then they finally go back to the Wiz and they find out that the Wiz ain't who the Wiz supposed to be. And, you know, they giving the backstory. They find out that it's, the Wiz is a woman and it's Queen Latifah. And we see her, look, Queen Latifah was playing stem roles, okay? She was a stud one minute, she was a femme the next, okay? I said, you better act your ass off and do your real life, you know? And, you know, they were just giving her backstory about instead of being a dog catcher like it was in a movie or whatever, she was a, a magician's assistant, you know? And they was doing the hot air balloon and they got um, blown away, and she took over, and, you know, that's how she got into Oz, and they looked at her like, oh my god, this person, where it came from, so you're gonna be the all-powerful, and they set her up like this, and she'd been up in that place all by herself for so many years, and, you know, and another thing that they did that they did differently than the movie, see, I have to see the Broadway play, this is why I keep referencing the movie, because I'm not gonna sit here and act like I seen the Broadway play, first of all, it was before my time, second of all, I have to go find it, I hope it's on YouTube, but, um, in the movie, and the Wiz was before my time too, but, you know, it was on, I had the Wiz ever since it was on VHS. Back in the day, VHS with a VCR. Come on now, y'all. But it was the scene at that moment when they were talking about how they're never going to get home, how they're not going to get their brain, the hearts, the courage, and all this stuff. And the Wiz started telling them um, exactly, well, you did this, so you show courage, you did this, so you got a heart, you thought of this, so you got a brain, and, you know, I got a hot air balloon, Dorothy, we can just go on here and fly the fuck up out of here, in the movie, Glenda came down and told them that, you know, and the Wiz was just like, could you take me with you? And she was like, you got to find what it is that you were searching for, you know, before I can do that, so I can't take you with me, but bitch, when they came back on, Queen Latifah had her dressed up, 
you know, she was ready to go singing her song and she was finna get on that hot air balloon. And she was like, Dorothy, you ready to go? Mind you, the balloon is flying off and she said, you ready to go? Girl, she didn't even give her a second to think. Dorothy said, no. Queen said, I'm gone. Bye-bye. I said, ain't this that a bitch? If she was going to change her mind, you didn't already said, I'm gone. The, the balloon was already gone. But then Uzo come down, and she's Glenda the Good Witch, and we see Amber Riley again, and, you know, Uzo starts singing home. Oh, we all thought that uh, Stephanie Mills, was it? Um, No, Dorothy starts singing home. <laughs> all I care about thinking about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you saw it, you start thinking about that scene and Martin with um Gina and Pam was trying to audition to become Biggie's backup singer and Pam came out there. When I think of home, I think of a place that you know. Come on, I got a man. I ain't gotta go home. I got a man. Listen, that was everything. Uzo did her thing. Um. She was a little pitchy on some parts, but she did her thing. And the whole show, it was cute. It was really, really more than I expected to be. And I didn't see too much wrong with it. it only did them things that I just pointed out right then and there. But other than that, if you have not seen it, please watch it, you know, and judge for yourself. Um, it was it was nice. I could have did without the little digital screen, you know, the digital set, but Hey, you have to make do with what you got. But it was cute. It was cute for what it was. And um, I'm going to watch it again probably tomorrow. I'm going to go to bed. I got to go to work in the morning. But, um, yeah, if you saw it, tell me how you felt about it. Tell me did you like it. What was your favorite part about it? It was cute. It was cute. And, um, yeah, I will see you guys later. And I, I, I highly suggest, if you have not seen The Wiz, bitch, BET, play that shit. You're going to find it on BET or Centric, okay? It's going to come on. They be playing it back to back, back to back, just like they did Baby Boy and shit. But go see it on, I don't know if it's on Netflix, but go find it because it's a really good movie. And, um, yeah, I'll see y'all later. Peace.